Hello everybody, I am the gamer Ace Cannon, and welcome back to my channel. It's so great to see you again. And after a two year hiatus, I am very happy to announce that my top five series is back. Now, in case you forgot about how the series works, I will choose a topic and rank them based only on my personal opinion from number five to number one. All right, let's get started because it's game on. Sonic the Hedgehog is one of the most popular video game characters of all time. However, video games isn't the only thing he's known for. The character has been in commercials, comics, and movies. He was also the very first video game character to have a giant balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. But another thing that Sonic is known for is his TV shows. So to celebrate Sonic's newest series, Sonic Prime, that is now available to watch on Netflix, I think now is the perfect time to do my top five favorite Sonic the Hedgehog TV series. Kicking things off at number 5 is Sonic Underground. In this series that lasted for only 40 episodes from January 6th to March 23rd of 1999, Sonic and his two siblings, a sister named Sonia and a brother named Manic, are the children of the Queen of Mobius. But unfortunately they were separated because the evil Dr. Robotnik overthrew Queen Elena and took over Mobius. So it's up to Sonic and his siblings to stop Robotnik and his two bounty hunter henchmen, Sleet and Dingo, to find their mother. So for anyone who has seen the series, is it just me, or does anyone else find the show really weird? I mean, not only is Sonic royalty, but he also has two siblings? Also, fun fact, all three hedgehogs are voiced by Jaleel White, who is most known for his iconic role as Steve Urkel in the sitcom Family Matters. I mean, there isn't a lot that feels like the video games in this show. The only references to the games are Sonic's love for Chili Dogs and the Chaos Emeralds. Even though for some reason there's only two of them, when there's normally seven of them. Now, if you thought Sonic having siblings and being royalty was weird, this show gets way weirder than that. You see, this character called the Oracle of Delphius, who was voiced by the great Maurice LaMarche, gave Sonic and his siblings these powerful medallions that could transform into musical instruments, which could then be used as weapons. The only weapon that Sonic usually ever needed in both the games and other series is his incredible speed. Also, these musical instruments were used by Sonic and his siblings in a rock band called the Sonic Underground. And this felt really out of place, because I've never seen Sonic play an instrument in any of the games. The songs in the show are really bad. I mean, I thought they were mostly going to play rock music based on the opening and closing theme songs, but most of the songs aren't even rock. But instead, we got rap, pop, country, and disco music, and this felt very misleading. The animation during the music videos are really all over the place. There's a bunch of random flashing images, and there's clips of the episode that you're currently watching. Unfortunately, there's one of these musical numbers in every episode. This was too bad because the music in the video games are loved by most of the fans, including myself. I will admit, I did enjoy the opening theme song, but sadly, that was the only song that I liked in this show. However, on a more positive note, I do like the animation in this series. I'm a big fan of hand-drawn animation, and the show does look good. 
even though you can find some weird shots like this throughout the series. So even though I did like the theme song and the animation, there is a lot of issues with this series. This doesn't feel like a show I ever thought I would see Sonic in, because a lot of the elements in the show doesn't feel like any of his video games. It almost feels like a really bad fanfiction, and I personally wouldn't recommend this show. And that's why Sonic Underground is number 5. Coming in at number 4 is Sonic Boom. In this series that ran for two seasons, that premiered on November 8, 2014, and ended on November 18, 2017, and had 104 episodes. So for those who don't know, Sonic Boom was a spin-off to the Sonic franchise that produced two 3DS games, Shattered Crystal and Fire and Ice. It also produced one of the worst Sonic video games of all time, and that would be Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. There were also toys and comic books as well, but the biggest success in the Sonic Boom franchise was the TV series. So in this series, Sonic and his friends Tails, Amy, Knuckles, and newcomer Styx try to stop Dr. Eggman and other villains from taking over their island home. Unlike the last series, this one, and the other ones I'm going to be discussing today, definitely feel more like the video games. What I mean by this is that in the video games, it's a very common theme of Dr. Eggman trying to take over the world, and it's up to Sonic and his friends to stop him. This is what I expect of a show that's based on Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, when it comes to Sonic Boom, it is the only Sonic show that is broken up into two 11-minute episodes, instead of one full 22-minute episode, which is similar to some other shows like SpongeBob SquarePants, The Fairly Odd Parents, and one of my all-time favorites, Phineas and Ferb. This would also be the first Sonic show to use CGI animation. Even though I said earlier that I'm a big fan of hand-drawn animation, I really do like the 3D animation in this show. It's bright, colorful, very detailed, and I really enjoyed the battle scenes, because the movements of the characters look very smooth, and overall, they're just really fun to watch. One of the biggest reasons why this show doesn't rise to the top for me, it's the humor. Now, I know that the humor is the main focus of the show, and I know a lot of people really do like it especially when they make fun of the Sonic franchise. But for me, it is very hit or miss. Before the show premiered, I already knew about most of the criticisms for both the Sonic Boom and the main Sonic franchise, including how the games were better in 2D than 3D, and the redesigns of the main characters. So when they kept using those jokes throughout the series, I just didn't find them that funny because I just got tired of hearing them over and over again. There are also way too many jokes about Knuckles not being very smart. I mean, throughout the entire series, I only laughed a few times that involved those jokes. I also wasn't the biggest fan of the newest character Sticks. It's very similar to how I got tired with all the Knuckles is dumb jokes. I also really got tired of her paranoid personality. She always thought that everything was out to get her, from robots to aliens and also government agents. Styx says this a lot, and it gets really boring after a while. Also, her voice alone really gets on my nerves. Which is a shame because I do like the voices of everyone else in the show, but for me... After a while, it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. So while I really do enjoy the animation and all of those great battle scenes, it was the humor of the show that really brought it down the list for me, because it was very hit or miss, and I wasn't a fan of sticks. If you think you would like a Sonic show that makes fun of itself, I'd say check it out. But for me, Sonic Boom is number four.
We are speeding through this list, and we are already at number three, which is The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. This series aired five days a week from September 6th to December 3rd in 1993, and lasted for 65 episodes. However, the creators added a Christmas special, but that didn't come until three years later, on November 24th, 1996. There was even a pilot that was created as a proposal for the series, and was never aired. But clips of the pilot were shown in the episode Untouchable Sonic, and in the credits after every episode. Then the entire 7 minute pilot was released right here on YouTube in 2009. Which was a really cool treat for all of the Sonic fans. As for the plot of the show, it's actually pretty similar to the last one. It's about Sonic and his best friend Tails trying to thwart Dr. Robotnik and his robot henchmen from trying to take over Mobius. Now, this series does get a lot of hate. And in some cases, I can understand why. The animation, especially in the background, is very flat. There's no detail or depth to it. Also, there were some moments in some episodes where the animation and the sound didn't sync up, which was hard to watch at times because you could hear Sonic talking, but his mouth had stopped moving. There were also the very strange Sonic Says PSA segments. At the end of each episode, Sonic would do a 30 second public service announcement. They were all about health and safety topics including smoking, drinking, crossing the street, sexual harassment. There's even one about climbing into a dryer. I think the idea of the PSAs were good, but they are a little weird to watch, and it was very unexpected to see in a Sonic the Hedgehog show. On a more positive note, we once again get to see references from the games in the show from locations like the Marble and Chemical Plant Zones, the Rings, Sonic's love for Chili Dogs, the Chaos Emeralds, even though for some reason there's only four of them in this series. They even put in characters from the game Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine in the very first episode. One of the things I really do enjoy is the wacky physical comedy, because it reminded me a lot of the Looney Tunes cartoons. Even the intro to the show and the sound effects feel very Looney Tune-like. I mean, there is nothing like the Looney Tunes, because they are some of the greatest cartoon characters of all time. Sonic and Tails are great as always, and Sonic is once again voiced by Jaleel White. I really do enjoy the tricks they play to outsmart Dr. Robotnik and his robot henchmen. I mean, does Sonic need to use disguises to defeat his enemies? No. But do I find it funny when it does happen? Yes. Yes, I do. Now, while I do enjoy the heroes, the main attraction in this series for me is the villains. Now, even though I'm not really a fan of Dr. Robotnik's design, I am a really big fan of his voice. And the person who does the voice for Dr. Robotnik is Long John Bardley. For those who don't know, he was a famous British blues rock singer. His version of Dr. Robotnik is more comedic and less threatening, which does fit the tone for the show. And the same thing goes for his robot henchmen, Scratch, Grounder, and Coconuts as well. So even though this show has some major issues, the series can definitely be fun to watch, Especially if you're a fan of the physical comedy that you would see in the Looney Tunes. And that's why The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog is number three. Coming in at number two is simply titled Sonic the Hedgehog, or as most fans like to call it, Sonic Sat AM because the show aired on Saturday mornings. In this series, Dr. Robotnik has taken over Mobius and turned most of its citizens into robots. Sonic and a resistance group called the Freedom Fighters must do whatever it takes 
to take down Robotnik and save the world. This series ran from September 18, 1993 to December 3, 1994, which lasted for two seasons and had a total of only 26 episodes. Just like the other series that I've talked about so far, this series also begins each episode with its theme song. And this one is my favorite out of all the Sonic shows. It's very fast paced, which matches nicely with Sonic speed. I really love the rock style to the song, and I also find the lyrics very catchy and easy to remember. This series is way different from the last one, even though they were airing around the same time. While The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog was more focused on comedy, this series is more focused on the continuing story. For instance, Sonic Boom and The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, for the most part, each episode can be watched out of order. So if you tune in to any episode, you won't feel lost. However, in this series, you should definitely watch the episodes in order. I really do enjoy this format, mostly because it feels like you're in a video game. And as you know, most video games usually do have a continuing story. At this point, I would love to tell you why I love this continuing story. I have given it a lot of thought, and I just can't tell you why I like it so much without spoiling it. And I would hate to do that for anyone who hasn't seen the show yet. So you're just going to have to trust me when I tell you that it is a really great story. However, one thing I can tell you about the story is that most of it takes place in Robotropolis, a city that is dark and mostly deserted. This is where I want to tell you about the great animation. It has a lot of shadow and rich dark colors, it's very detailed, and can look quite realistic at times. Once again, this is a hand-drawn animated series. Like I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of that style of animation. I think it's mainly because artists take a lot of time to draw each frame. There's about 24 frames per second, so think about how much time and effort it takes to draw an entire episode. Unfortunately, one thing I didn't like that happened with the animation in this series, although it didn't happen very often, there was some moments where the animation and the sound weren't synced up. I just hate it when that happens. Although, there is one thing I hated a lot more than the animation issue. And that would be the character, Antoine. Oh man, where do I even begin with this character? Antoine is a squire and claims to be a member of the Royal Guard, but he doesn't really bring anything to the team. He likes to talk a big game and claims that nothing scares him, but in the end, he's nothing more than a coward. I find that he does more harm than good for the Freedom Fighters. I've honestly lost count of how many times he's interfered with the plans of the group. He is very selfish and has a really big ego. He only seems to care about Princess Sally. I mean, he tries to impress her any chance that he gets, even though she's not interested in him at all. I'm pretty sure that the character was put in just for comic relief, but I never found him funny, and most of the time I kept thinking to myself, why is he even here? Now, on a more positive note, I am a really big fan of the voice acting here, because they brought together some very well-known voice actors for this show. Jaleel White once again does the voice of Sonic. Kath Susie, who is known for doing the voice of Lola Bunny from the Looney Tunes, not only does the voice of the leader of the Freedom Fighter, Sally Acorn, but she also does the voice of Sally's portable computer, Nicole. The late great Christine Cavanaugh, who is known for doing the voice of Chucky Pickles from the Rugrats, does the voice of the half-rabbit, half-robot character, named Bunny Rabot. But my favorite voice in the entire show has to be Dr. Robotnik, who was voiced by the legendary Jim Cummings. 
He is known for doing the voices of so many iconic characters, including Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, and Darkwing Duck. Even though I really hated Antoine, and there were some slight animation issues, this show does have some great animation, good characters with great voice acting, and a really good story as well. I'm sorry that I didn't talk too much about the story, but like I mentioned earlier, I really didn't want to spoil anything about it to anyone who hasn't seen it yet. I had a lot of fun watching the show, and I would recommend it. And that's why Sonic the Hedgehog is number two. Alright, here we are at number one. My favorite Sonic the Hedgehog TV show of all time is... Sonic X. This series first aired in Japan on April 6, 2003. It then debuted in North America on September 6th in the same year. It has a total of 78 episodes split into three seasons. The final season aired in North America on September 10th, 2005 to May 6, 2006. However, in Japan, the final season didn't air until April 4th, 2020. The reason I bring up Japan is because this series is an anime that was produced in Japan. In this show, Sonic and his friends get transferred to Earth thanks to the Chaos Emeralds. While he is there, Sonic gets rescued by a 12-year-old boy named Chris, and together, they must stop Dr. Eggman from taking over the world and try to find a way to get back home. One thing that a lot of people love to criticize with Sonic X is Chris Thorndike. A lot of people say that he is very annoying, useless, and had way more time in the show than Sonic and his friends. Honestly, I wasn't as bothered by Chris. Now, don't get me wrong, he isn't my favorite character in the show. But I never found him annoying or useless. And for me, he didn't take anything away from how good the show is. This series was the first Sonic TV show that I had ever seen. Up until that point, I only knew Sonic just through the video games that I played. It was a lot of fun to see Sonic and his friends portrayed in a different form of media. I really loved the fact that they took elements from the video game storylines, including the ones in Sonic Adventure and Sonic Battle, and used them in the series. Since I'm talking about the storylines, just like the games, I felt the series had a little bit of everything from mystery, to comedy, including Sonic being a wise guy like he usually is, to some romantic moments between Sonic and Amy, some very emotional moments, and of course, plenty of action-packed scenes. Also, another thing I really loved about this show is that this is the only series that had a complete ending to it. Unfortunately, the other shows that I talked about earlier never had a series finale because the shows got cancelled. Which I really hope doesn't happen to the new series. Besides the story element, there were also plenty of other references from the Sonic games in the show. All seven Chaos Emeralds and the Master Emerald were a huge part in the show to the locations which included Angel Island and Mystic Ruins. There were also some characters that you can only see in this series. It's actually quite a shame that we haven't seen these characters in the games in quite some time. A couple examples of this are Cream the Rabbit and her best friend Cheese. I really do hope that at some point we get to see these characters in the video games again. So, like I mentioned before, this show is a Japanese anime, which is a unique style of animation that I do like. Even though it's not my favorite style of animation, in this case, I thought the style worked well enough. 
However, I really loved the designs of the characters because they had a very similar look to how they look in the video games. So, I know a lot of people prefer to watch the show in Japanese for a number of reasons, including certain scenes that got cut out of the English version. But when it comes to anime for me, I prefer to watch the English version, and one of the reasons for this is because of the voice acting. The voices for Sonic and his friends in this show are done by the people who have done the voices of the characters in the games, including Jason Griffith doing the voice of Sonic, Lisa Ortiz as Amy Rose, Dan Green as Knuckles, and Mike Pollock doing the voice of Dr. Eggman. Even though the show isn't perfect, I still think this is the best TV series that is about Sonic the Hedgehog. I say this because not only did it feel the most faithful to the video games, but it also had a little bit of everything I would want in a Sonic TV show, including a really good theme song. I would highly recommend checking it out, and that's why Sonic X is number one. Alright, that has been my top five favorite Sonic the Hedgehog TV series. But now, I want to hear from you. Which Sonic TV show is your favorite? Please let me know in the comments below. And please let me know if you're going to check out his newest show, Sonic Prime. I can tell you that I definitely am and I'm really looking forward to it. Alright, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on both my Facebook and Instagram pages. I will make sure to put links to both of them in the description below. And if you want to check out my very first Top 5 episode, I will put a link to that in the description below as well. So once again... Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.